The theme for the 2020 Drum Corps International Winter Meetings is scaffolding for success, but the focus on health, wellness, and safety continues and really scaffolding around the progress that we've already made in that area. We just got out of a fascinating, and I love to talk about weather. I'm in, I'm in radio, so weather is right in my wheelhouse. A fascinating session with Dr. Kevin Clazel and Spencer Atkins, who are both meteorologists. Dr. Clazel with the University of Oklahoma's Campus Safety Program, and Spencer's a TV meteorologist in Huntington, West Virginia. Both of them are huge drum corps fans and have been around the activity a lot, especially in the last couple of years. Dr. K, let's start with you. I think this is the fourth year now that you have been intimately involved with Drum Corps International with our forecasting and with weather safety. What was the message that you brought today? Well, I think everything the folks this morning heard from me is things they've heard before but i think it's much like the activity itself repetition 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 you refine things you get better you improve and i think early on there was a lot of talk about wow i'm not quite sure how to do this and and this is complicated and it's hard but now that they've done it a couple of years they're finding certain things easy so now we can give them harder things uh, right the ability to integrate weather information with the other things that happen to a drum corps they're on a field that might be field turf where the temperatures are astronomically high. How does that impact heat illness, things like that? So I think the ability to add pieces as we go on really will help the, the cores become much safer in the future. Spencer, we had uh, weather impact the tour quite a bit in 2019, more it seemed like than in 2018. Uh, rain delays, a couple of heat delays. Um, how do the cores make decisions and show promoters make decisions about weather? Well. Dr. K here gives a lot of great input to the, the people at DCI. I kind of come at it from this, the fan standpoint, and it's been great to be able to work with him and kind of get into this, uh, the planning of this and the, and the shows. So there's a lot of back-channel communication uh, between Kevin and, and some of the show directors, and you work a lot with the DCI shows. Um, there are, let's say, the Phantom Show, for instance, in Charleston. I might work with them specifically there or even at camp I was working with Phantom uh, we went to shelter three times for tornadoes so there's a lot of back channel communication that happens and then you get uh, maybe like an accordion effect well look, if we just wait 30 minutes the storms will be through let's just take intermission out we might not sell as many hot dogs or t-shirts but we'll get the whole show in for the fans the cores can have their entire show's entire run put on a great show for the fans and that's kind of there's a lot of give and take and a lot of back channel communication yeah, you, you put your phone number right there up <laughs> on the, uh, the PowerPoint. It gets used. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, I, I know that a lot of the core directors will, and not necessarily even core directors, but program coordinators will be in, in touch with you guys. Right? right, and I think it's it's good to have somebody who can, I mean, most of them know, right? They know kind of what's going on, but it's good to have that expertise backing those decisions where they feel like, okay, wow, I feel like we're doing the right thing and the meteorologist on board and, and et cetera. So so working with everybody from the core directors to the instructional staff to the drum majors all the way up, uh, we want to make sure that the message is consistent, right? That's part of the problem before is that everybody kind of had their own app or their own meteorologist and you'd come to these meetings to decide what to do and you'd have 10 different answers. Mm -hmm. Now we've kind of reined in that information so that it's consistent, everybody's getting the same information and I think you make much better decisions when the information is consistent. Other than calling you guys, what, what kind of technology should the cores have with them on the road and at rehearsal? Oh yeah, you have you have your famous heat device. But real quick, I will say, just let me jump back to follow on what you were saying there. Um, if you look at every ticket, it'll say schedule may change, and I see that the cores and the show, uh, you know, producers, everybody who's in charge, have been willing to slide things. So as a fan base, we need to be willing to slide that too, and that's what the social media is great for. I don't think we're ever going to move up, but we might move back, which we have moved back for heat. So people just need to know that that is we need to be flexible as fans too, and cores, and also putting together the shows. Right. We, we talk a lot about performer safety, but this is as much about spectator safety Absolutely as it is, is performer safety. Which gets safety. back to your your wonderful little heat device. The heat device that Spencer keeps bringing. Up up is a wet bulb thermometer. What is that? So wet bulb globe <laughs> temperature yeah, globe. thermometer. Yeah, and that's, that's actually yeah. one of the big big things that, you know, again, we talk about scaffolding and refinement. Uh, I know the first time I mentioned that word, we had a lot of people go out and get wet bulb thermometers. It's yeah. not the same thing. <laughs> we meteorologists have the most idiotic terminology for some of these things. We know what it is, but it's really tough. Mm -hmm. We make it so hard for people, <laughs> right? Um, it's really not that hard, and we have to learn how to communicate better, and that was one of the things I realized last year. 
try to communicate that very well. Um, so this year I can refine that and say, okay, this is what you need, this is where you go get it, uh, and this is how you use it. So, so what is it and how do the cores use it? So wet bulb globe is a device that takes into account temperature, moisture, wind speed, and sunshine or radiation, cloudiness, et cetera. The traditional heat index, which has been used for decades, really doesn't map well with heat illness, uh, and that's because it only uses temperature and humidity. Everybody knows wind is a cooling effect, mm -hmm. and everybody knows I'd rather be in the shade than in the sun. So the wet bulb globe temperature device actually builds those into a heat metric so that you get a more comprehensive feel of what the risk is and a more comprehensive indication of what the performer is feeling like standing out there on the field, in the sun, no wind, with temperature and humidity in their costumes, whatever it may be. So it gives you a much more realistic representation of the heat risk than does heat illness. And from the communication standpoint, what we've got to do is we talk about this all the time. Heat index, it's 100. Well, we go, oh, wow, that's terrible. Well, this might be 93 or 95, which doesn't sound as jazzy, but it has much more impact on a performer. Well, military uses it, and we're trying to get you know more people to use this, sporting events, because it has a more direct impact. But the number's not as jazzy, so now the communicators need to get out there and tell people, so what if it's only 93? It really means this, it's danger. Let's double back for a second to the other factors that can affect safety as it pertains to weather during rehearsals or, or performance. Um, and, and those are factors with the individual performer. You even you brought up nutrition for one thing. Right. The One of the things that the meteorologist has to learn in this particular environment, stay in your lane there are the, th the types of things that will impact a performer from a heat perspective is not just the weather. It's did they have enough sleep? It's what did they eat? What did they drink? How hydrated are they? Etc. Uh, are they on medication? Those pieces. And that really involves the athletic trainers, the medical staffs of the Corps. And I think that's where Marching Music Health Wellness Safety Project comes in, is that we're now binding together the meteorologist with the trainer, with the nurse, with you know medical, and all of those folks are looking at the whole performer, not just these individual pieces. And that's the big change from several years ago. We were kind of all coming at them, sort of bombarding them. Well, you have to do this, and you have to do this. Well, what if we all get our act together, come up with a comprehensive plan, and then present that to the Corps? So. This is weather money ball we're talking yes, about. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Yes. A little bit. Oakland analytics. Asia, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of weather analytics applied to drum corps, yes. Spencer, Dr. K, thank you both. Absolutely. Dr. Kevin Clazel and Spencer Atkins, two meteorologists trying to keep drum corps performers and fans safe. Hey, Dan Potter. And Jeff Griffith with the DCI News Network. From the rules proposals to the Drum Major Leadership Summit, we are covering it all at the Drum Corps International Winter Meetings. Yeah, you can follow along on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, our website, dci.org. Make sure you leave us your comments and join in the conversation.